What's going on everybody, it's Stas here and in today's video I'm going to be talking about and sharing with you all the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade heading into the month of August in 2019. I'm also going to be talking about some that you guys ended up calling out either in the Discord group chat or on the YouTube video from Friday in the comments section. So if you did call out a stock, I appreciate it and I'll get to it in this video if I do see potential in it. So typically every Sunday Sunday. For those of you guys that don't know, I'm uploading a video like this sharing with you all my thoughts for the upcoming week and what stocks that I'm personally watching and some that the community is calling out as well. So if you're interested in this type of content, consider subscribing to the channel, join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group. All of those are linked down below so you can further be connected with our community. And without further ado, guys, let's just get right into it very quickly talking about what and ended up happening last week, the past five days, in terms of the S&P 500, which are the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the United States. And I personally watch this to kind of gauge the markets, right? And I know a lot of other people obviously do that as well. So let's go to the five-day, five-minute. You guys can see we opened up the week last week at about 29.75. We ended up um, closing that day on a nice little upswing. We gapped up the next day and pretty much for the first three days of last week's trading you know we were gapping up day after day we gapped up Tuesday gapped up Monday, we closed off, or rather, uh, rather we gapped up on Tuesday, gapped up again on Wednesday, and had a very strong close. We saw a bit of a pullback due to the two very strong days. Uh, you know, the RSI was very overbought. We got the healthy pullback, and then we saw the strong gap up, and then another all-time high at 30.27 um, this past Friday on the S&P 500. And another technical spot very quickly, I might as well mention it right now that I'm noticing that the S&P broke was this resistance at about 3015 to about 3020 that break the all-time high that's a very strong bullish move and now I'm looking to see whether or not the S&P is going to pull back and potentially retest this old resistance as a new support and maybe continue from there guys so overall in terms of the S&P that's what I'm seeing right now the markets in general they're very very bullish they've been hitting all-time highs and the technicals they're pointing to more green in my personal opinion so let's just get right into the list guys I have a pretty hefty list um, here on my piece of paper of stocks and ETFs that I want to talk about and I don't want this video to be too long so let's get right into it so the first one is Micron guys ticker simple uh, MU and Micron, for those of you all that have not been paying attention to it, Micron's been on absolute fire, guys. And I have a pretty funny relationship with Micron. I was actually down about 30-40% on the position, a long-term position on Micron. My average is in like the mid-50s, like 54, 55, or something like that. And I was down quite a bit, to be completely honest with you guys. You can see $28. I was down about like 50% at this point, a little bit less, like maybe 45. And now with this huge upswing I'm only down like 10% 15% on my position which is awesome and honestly this has become a tradable stock right now that has a lot of um, you know margin of profit in my opinion due to how quickly and how aggressive it's been you know fluctuating upwards and then how aggressive the momentum has been upwards and you guys can see this could be setting up right now for a uh, you know a punch into the $50 level and by that I mean you know we see the pullback from 4870 down to about 4749 where we closed on Friday and notice how there's been two separate occasions where we've seen similar pullbacks on Micron we've seen it pull back for a couple of days not a lot a little brief pullback of maybe a couple percentage points and from that pullback it's kissed the S, uh, 50 SMA and launched very aggressively to higher highs and right now I'm watching to see if Micron's going to do that maybe it sells off another day or two brings that RS side down a bit and we'll see what it does when it meets the 50 SMA here on the 184 hour chart it could definitely play uh, be a play here if we start to see a support and a potential reversal on that spot and I'm personally watching that um, heavily right I think there's a lot of potential in that at this point and if we take a look very quickly you know on some of these uh, longer term charts here this is the one year one day you guys can kind of see there is a resistance from a couple of months ago back 
back in September, actually, almost a year ago at this point in 2018, there's a resistance at about, uh, old resistance at about 47 ish dollars. So I wouldn't be surprised if it were to pull back and maybe test that as a support before launching off of there. And at that point, if we did pull back maybe another 50 cents, that would be a point where it would be right on top of that 180 SMA or rather the 50 SMA at around, I'd say like 46.75, maybe like $47. So MU, that's what I'm watching. The next one on the list is UGAS, which is a natural gas ETF that goes up whenever natural gas is going up. And, and natural gas, guys, it has not been going up recently, hence the downtrend on um, UGAS. And let me just show you very quickly the downtrend right now on natural gas. In the brief... Um, Honestly, the brief synopsis on what I'm thinking right now for this trade, uh, for potentially trading UGAS, is if natural gas ends up consolidating and retesting that 50 SMA at some point. And I think that's very possible based off of the trend that we're seeing here. Notice how this green line on the 20-day, one-hour chart, this has been a resistance for uh, natural gas. And notice how every time we've pushed to a lower low, we've consolidated a bit, and every time the RSI has gotten very oversold. We've consolidated a bit and we've recovered testing the 50 SMA and then getting dumped down again. So at this point, we may recover a bit. And if you see it getting into the 220s again, that's a very good recovery, in my opinion, a uh, very good sign of recovery, rather, in my opinion. And we may be going back up to test that 50 SMA. And at that point, you know, that little breather that uh, natural gas might get to the upside because it's been getting hammered. That could be a point in time where where we hop into you gas because again it goes up whenever natural gas is going up so we can see up to the 50 SMA there's about a six seven percent um, margin on the on you gas right there guys and of course the beautiful thing about inverse ETFs you gas is an inverse ETF by the way it's inverse is D gas is if let's say we profit on the upside here or we miss the move pre-market and you see it's getting rejected you know you could end up getting into D gas to profit on the rejection and the continuation of the downtrend uh, if that ends up happening. And, um, that's really it at this point for you guys, right? At this point, it may see a bounce because it's oversold and uh, just honestly needs that recovery. So that's what I'm watching there. Amazon is another one that's been requested, and honestly, I'm watching this one as well. Of course, I'm watching a lot of these tech stocks. And Amazon, I think, yeah, they did report earnings the other day. I didn't really dive into too much research on their earnings. I don't even own Amazon. The truth is I've never owned Amazon in any of my stock accounts. Fun fact of the day, but if we look down here to see what their earnings were, because honestly, there's been a lot of earnings. I forget what did what, but anyway... You know, if we can't find it, it's no big deal at this point. But anyway, you know, if you guys know Amazon's earnings, drop them down below in the comment section. But just judging off a technical basis at this point, you know, Amazon's not looking too good. We can see ever since we hit 2035, that was a resistance close to the all-time high at about 2050. We got rejected there. And you can see the descending pattern that Amazon's been on on this hourly chart. You can see it's clearly been making lower lows, lower highs. This earnings... I'm I'm guessing it wasn't too great because the stock dropped heavily, pushing us to a lower low, continuing this downwards pattern. And at this point, we're also seeing a bearish cross. The 50 SMA is crossing below the 180 SMA. The moving averages are acting as, you know, resistance points. Maybe a trade we could uh, play here is similar to a UGAS trade, uh, the UGAS trade that I just talked about. Maybe this one pops up to the 50 SMA, maybe to 1975, which would give it, let's see how how much profit that would give it potentially maybe two to three percent that could definitely happen and if we look over here to the 180 very quickly guys we're at a pretty critical spot on top of the 180 SMA here. So if we actually hold this and hold 1915, which it seems like we did, guys, we consolidated on top of that level. Um, this is a support as well. You know, we may be running back up here if we do hold that. And a critical break, in my opinion, is going to be once we break this general trend. You know, if we pop out, what that's going to do is that's going to solidify the bounce on the 180 SMA and a breakout of the resistance down 
trend that we're seeing here, and that might lead us to all-time highs again in Amazon. So that's what I'm watching there. Another hot stock, another stock that's been on a lot of people's radar has been Roku. Roku has been one that's gone from $26 per share all the way up to $113 per share. And if you ask me, guys, that's insane because that's only happened since the month of December in 2018. That's literally like seven, eight months ago. That's insane. That's like a, a 5X almost in Roku stock. And at this point, they have earnings coming up on the 7th of August. That's about a week, 10 days from the time that I'm recording this video. And I, and I don't know how their earnings are going to fluctuate the stock. And quite frankly, nobody knows how their earnings is go are going to fluctuate the stock. And if it does end up, you know, reporting bad earnings, this one may be running down to test the 180 SMA if there is a sell-off there. Again, sometimes companies report bad earnings and the stock doesn't budge. It really just depends on the particular scenario. It's not, there's no rule book to how stocks react to earnings, which is why I like waiting until after earnings, right? I like to see how the sentiment is a bit after earnings, how investors and traders react to the stock. That gives me some better insight. I don't like going blindly in it before earnings, but that's just me, right? You can do your own thing. If you like trading earnings plays, go for it, right? But for me, that's a bit risky and a bit out of my risk tolerance. But hey, at this point, Roku, you know, we're in this little downwards trending uh, channel from what I'm seeing here, right? Take a look at that. You can see we're trading in this particular channel right now based, uh, you know, pretty much based uh, from the 16th of July, which was about 12 days ago. We hit 113. We bottomed out. We bottomed out here 106. We bottomed out 103, lower low. We're popping. We're seeing a resistance now at about 110, which is a lower high. So at this point, we may be dumping. We may be going to 103. And from there, if we hold we may pop up and continue this channel. That's kind of what I'm seeing here. But ideally, guys, take a look at what I'm about to show you all. Ideally, I want this to happen here. I want to get rejected, come back, come back, test maybe 103, and test the 180 SMA. And from here, I think this could be a breakout if, you know, it's, you know, I don't know about, er uh, earnings might fluctuate that, honestly, guys, but if there was, you know, if this ended up happening after earnings, we pulled down, and if earnings were positive, you know, this could be a breakout point if we bounce on the support of this channel and the 180 SMA here, we can really break out, and especially if we break above the resistance. So, I'm kind of watching that maybe set up here, that might be a setup. As you guys can see, you can see it even clearer here on the smaller time frame charts. And let's get into a call out here that one of the subscribers of the YouTube channel ended up making. And that is ticker symbol ZYZI. Is that not? Or ZYXI. ZYXI. I. That's the ticker symbol. I've honestly never even heard of this stock, to be completely honest, but we take requests to cover on these videos, and here is a stock. So, this one I'm seeing went from $250 up to about $12, so that's a very, very nice multiply, uh, multiple right there. You know, it got multiplied uh, about three, about four or five-ish times, and that's a pretty good return. Now we're starting to see a peak, $12, a drop to 8 a recovery to about 960 lower high, rejection, lower low. We're holding that 180 SMA, which does give it some sign of life, but one thing I'm seeing here, guys, is we're still trending below the 50 SMA, and this could potentially be a point where we get rejected, break the 180 SMA, and, you know maybe run down at this point and just judging off the movement of this stock you can see i could just tell this is more it used to be a penny stock now it's running up this is one of those stocks that's very very volatile right and my guess just just judging off the past here how the stocks reacted to earnings i'm thinking that this earnings report coming up on the 31st again this is pure speculation just from how the stock's been reacting but i think this earnings report's going to fluctuate the stock heavily whether it's positive Positive or negative and if it's positive guys and we break out of this little downwards trend we break out of the 50 SMA here that could be a big breakout and this stock can offer a lot of potential up to previous highs maybe of 30 to 31 percent right up to 1190 12 ish dollars but let's say the earnings are negative we break the 180 SMA that's a very technical bad technical break there very negative we may be going back down to let's say 565 that's a level I'd be watching 
maybe, you know, maybe like $7 flat. That could be the next level. So just keep an eye on that 180 SMA. That's what I have to say about this one. Honestly, that's what it comes down to. And if we pop, that could be a very good play there with a high, a high return. But in my opinion, this one does seem a bit more risky just judging off how the stock's been performing recently. So Walmart is another one, guys. Walmart here is one that doesn't offer a lot of potential, but it does offer some. And this is another one that did report earnings or is reporting earnings in about two weeks here. So you may have time here to hop in and out before earnings if you don't like trading earnings either. But I don't know about for me, I think there's some other opportunities out there. Like I'm personally in UNH. This is not one that I'm talking about today, but this is definitely one that I see a lot of potential in here of about 7%, right? We're holding the 180 SMA, we're popping. But if we go back to Walmart, you know, I see a lot more potential for falling um, in Walmart stock, to be honest, right? We ended up holding 111, 110, which is good. You know, I say if we break that, we'll definitely be testing the 180 SMA here at 109. That's what I'm watching. And if you see Walmart right now, guys, upwards to 115, it offers about 2%. But if we get rejected by this 50 SMA and we break 110, you know, down to that 180 SMA, there's about a 4% potential for it to drop from where we are now to there. So in my opinion, there's a bit more risk than there is with reward right now with Walmart, especially heading into the earnings report. But again, you know, if we actually pull down, this would be ideal, in my opinion, as an entry. Let's say we pull down, we hold this. i rather that happen because from there we might have a 5-6% potential, um, you know, upwards to, you know, the previous high here at about $115 to $116. So that's kind of what I'm watching with Walmart. The next one is another call out, ATVI, at v, uh, uh, Activision Blizzard is this one. And this is one that I've honestly just not been watching recently. I watched it and traded it a bunch in the past, as you guys can see my previous analysis. But over the past month, month and a half, my eyes have been off at V. And at this point, I still want to see it break above $50 and hold that level. For me, that is what it needs to do right now. If we're just going to clear, you know, this whole drawing set very quickly, you guys can see at V. It's been struggling to get above $50 and to hold above $50. So for me, this is a textbook like horizontal pattern at this point that at V's in, right? Very clear support at around $40, very clear resistance at $50. For me, I need to see it break 50. It's almost there. It's at a spot of resistance that it hasn't broken above in months at this point, right? It broke above it a couple of times very briefly, but it's failed to hold that level. You know, at this point, I need to see a pop and hopefully earnings are good and hopefully earnings are what get us above this $50 level. And at that point, if we hold it, you know, there's a lot of room to run because you guys know at V has been crushed. A lot of the video game stocks have been crushed. If we go to the one year chart, you can see the stock. This stock was $84 a couple of months ago, guys. That's crazy. So from 50, the next spot we can go to is 52. And from there, you guys can see how much margin is available, right? This could be a long term swing, even. You can see $62, $63. $3 is the next resistance and from 50 up to 62 guys you can do the math that's like a 10 15 percent profit margin at least there's a ton of potential here in at v um i'm looking at this honestly as a long-term swing trade if we do get some positive news and a positive earnings report I definitely think this could be a good trade here. So the last one I want to talk about today is one that is at a pretty interesting spot right now where it could break out. And that is ticker symbol L-O-W, Lowe's Companies. You guys can see Lowe's at this point. We are pulling back from the high at about 108. We're pulling down to about 102. We've tested that as a higher low. That's opened about a 6% margin of profit. It seems like we're consolidating and finally looking to break out and break upwards with only one barrier left in the way, which is the 50 SMA at this point. So if we break that, in my opinion, and the target buy at this point is at around 105 for initial uh, initial position, um, 105. You know, if we break up to that level, I think there's a ton of potential in lows up to $108. That's a clear resistance, right? We can clearly see that here. Let me show you all. You know, 108. 
And if we break 108, we may be going to 111, 112. And of course, the high here you can see is $118. So at this point, Lowe's, they're reporting earnings as well. And notice how a lot of these companies are reporting earnings, guys. We are in earnings season right now, and they're reporting on the 21st. That's about three weeks away, so you probably do have time to hop in and out again if you don't like trading before earnings. But that's it really, guys. You know, if we pop, we could fill up from one. 104.50 up to 108. That's about a 4% margin. I really do like that. So that's it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me. And let me know down below in the comment section, what are your thoughts on these stocks? What are your thoughts on the stock market itself right now? Are we going to continue hitting all-time highs? Are we going to see a correction? I would love to know what you guys think. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.